to return a letter like this with specific answers to specific questions is unusual. I've not seen that. Patterson's letter even surprised Dr. Michael Thompson, an expert with years of experience giving psychological evaluations for courts. My impression is that he wanted to get a message out. In that message, Patterson gave short and vague answers to questions about motive. The offenders like this uh, usually are quite secretive as to their reasons why. He's afraid people won't understand it, and many people won't. Police have said that he was meticulous in planning this, but he seemed to indicate in his letter that he did it as an impulse. Uh, what do you make of that? I don't believe that. It's impossible that this thing was done um, impulsively. According to the criminal complaint, Patterson scouted the Kloss home twice and even shaved his head to avoid leaving DNA at the scene. Offenders like this virtually always have a plan. In his letter, Patterson said he was sorry. Remorse tends to go hand in hand with being caught. In Thompson's experience, some defendants apologize to get a lighter sentence, while others feel remorse only after the fact. Once he's been caught, he's had plenty of time to think about it. In this case, though, Patterson likely won't be able to avoid a life sentence, even if he pleads guilty, no matter what he wrote in this letter. There isn't anything in the letter that is going to aggravate his uh, charges or his sentence, nor is there anything in there that's going to mitigate or lessen his uh, sentence or charges uh, either. I also asked Dr. Thompson tonight whether he could evaluate Patterson's mental competence based on this letter, but he said it really isn't possible to determine that without doing an actual in-person psychological evaluation. Back to you. All right. Thank you, Danny.